Does the news just ever overwhelm you? Do you just get so stressed out about it? That's how I am. I get super obsessed about the news. I read from the left, from the right. I want to know what the moderates are saying. I want to know what the conservatives are saying. I want to know what everybody's saying. And so I don't just read the New York Times and stop there. I go on and on and on. I just obsess completely about everything. And that's part of who I am, I guess you could say. I, I'm an artist, and being obsessed and being stressed out and being nervous is all just part of everything that I do. Um, as you can see for the piece that's on the screen now, this is actually a piece that's made out of uh, newspapers. So it's, uh, the news really impacts everything that I do. And so this is a piece where I took newspapers and it's thousands and thousands and thousands of pieces of paper that we folded and we rolled and then I ended up making this piece out of it. And so the news really does impact everything that I do and all the choices that I make for my artwork. So things that I really stress out about are the, med the Middle East. I really stress out about social issues. I really stress out just nearly about anything at all. And um, that's the foundation of my artwork, though. That's what everything, um, it's the basis of my work. It's real issues that we all know about and that we all kind of sometimes want to turn off and not think about, but the reality is, is that it is still happening in so many different lives and in so many different places in the world. So I'm going to talk to you today about, it's all relevant, I promise. <laughs> I'm an artist, but the news is something that really does impact everything for me. So I'm going to talk to you today about two different pieces. Um, the first piece being Letters of Sacrifice. This was a piece that I made as a senior here at St. Edwards University. And it was a piece that, um, you know, I've, I very much worried that nobody was going to care about it. This is a piece that's a memorial to service members who've been killed since 9-11. I'm a veteran of the Air Force, and I served first, and then I came as a student here. And um, I felt like I was surrounded by a bunch of people that didn't care about the war. They didn't know about it. They were way more into pop culture and the things that were happening in their own lives that I didn't really think that they gave two craps about the war, really, and about everything that was going on. You know, they, did, they didn't know where Afghanistan was on a map, much less how to spell it. So I was really worried about making a piece, a memorial to service members who'd been killed since 9-11 because I felt like my audience here at St. Edwards wasn't going to care. But that wasn't true at all. Um, I ended up having a paper rolling party. Like I said, I rolled paper. My professors really wanted me to name the party anything besides a paper rolling party, <laughs> for obvious reasons. But maybe it helped with the turnout, I don't know. But, <laughs> but um, you know, I, I ended up having this paper rolling party where I thought nobody was going to come there again. And 55 students showed up on a Saturday at 9 AM. And I really was surprised by that. I was surprised that so many people showed up to help me with my art project. And they knew it was about the war, and they knew that it was you know, something to raise awareness about the military. And so um, one thing that naturally happened was while we were rolling all this paper, here's the photo of the in progress of Letters of Sacrifice, while we were rolling all of the paper, uh, conversations started happening. All of a sudden, all these people that I thought didn't care about the war were asking questions, not only from me, but from other veterans that were in the room, from you know, the students were talking amongst each other, wondering what it would be like to serve in the military, wondering how different that would be to serve rather than go to college first, and all these different things. And so all of a sudden, all the student body that I thought didn't care, they obviously did care enough to ask questions and to wonder all these things about a subject matter that before maybe they didn't know about. So even though they didn't get the entire story, they got these individual stories, which I think is very significant. So. Um, this is a side profile. So you can see the paper here is rolled. Uh, it's folded first, and then it's rolled. And I do that for a reason. I, uh, a symbol of life to death is a spiral. So I fold the paper, and I roll it to create this symbol. And so each one of these rolls represents a service member who's been killed in the war since 9-11. Today, that's 6,872. Uh, this week, Master Sergeant Joshua Wheeler died um, in Iraq. And um, he was, you know, he, he died fighting for something that some people argue is not worth fighting for. And so I read the news about that, too. I obsess about it still. Even after this project was already made, I still add to it. 
So this project here um, started off by showing at St. Edwards, but it was obviously something that I couldn't take home with me. You know, I remember following Maya Lynn. She's an artist that I've, I've been following for years. And one of the things that she said was that if you want to make art that the people see, then make sure you don't make it for your home. Make sure it's not something that you're going to hang above your couch or something. Make it to where the world can see it. And so I decided, you know, for sure I was going to do that. And it also made it to where I had to really push to make sure that Letters of Sacrifice didn't end up at home. And so right after it left, letter, right after it left St. Edwards University, it went on to um, the Texas Military Forces Museum here in Austin. And then it went on to universities and to military installations and to little towns would show it, big towns would show it. And um, today it's at the Pentagon. And that was my goal from the very beginning was to get this to where the people that make the decisions about the war would actually get to see it and that they would, yeah, I wanted it to be in DC. That was the goal. And I remember some of my peers being like, oh yeah, okay, like dream on, you know, but like, <laughs> It took three years of being rejected several times along the way, but now the work is in DC and it's being seen. And it's not just in the Pentagon, but it's in the apex of the Pentagon that the Secretary of Defense's office and wing is. So I know Ash Carter's seen it and I know that the, his employees have seen it. And it's something that, like, I, I don't know if it's making any sort of impact, but I know that they're seeing my work. And it's incredible to feel that, that sort of success. Here's a photo of it at the Pentagon. Um, it's also in a room full of paintings of service members who've been killed since 9-11 as well. And so um, the success from having it shown at the Pentagon has led to many, many things, shows around the country. Um, and this next piece I'm gonna talk about is A Battle Lost. And A Battle Lost I made because um, I got this opportunity to make another piece of artwork that was meaningful, and they wanted it to be veteran-related. It's in a veteran art show in San Francisco. And they wanted letters of sacrifice, but it wasn't available. So um, I had this opportunity to make another piece. And so my work has changed over the three years. Um, this is uh, more of what I'm doing now. There's a lot of movement in the piece. They hang on the wall. Um, this piece is about uh, veteran suicide. And um, so what I wanted to do with it was to uh, make sure that the material still matched. The other piece, Letters of Sacrifice, you know, it was all made out of condolence letters. This piece is all made out of paper, uh, made out of military uniforms, because one thing that all veterans have in common is that we've all worn the uniform. And so I wanted to be able to include that. And so Malachi Muncy is a friend of mine. He's an Army veteran, and he makes paper in San Marcos, Texas, out of military uniforms. And so I contacted my friend, and I asked him, you know, could he could I commission him to make a ton of paper for me that we could rip up and we could roll? And so this is a photograph of the paper. Um, this is a beige uh, color, but we also had green, and I mean, they were all different shades of uh, green to beige, as you saw in the previous picture. And uh, so we took this paper and we ripped it up and we folded it and we rolled it. And so uh, just like I'm obsessed about the news, I'm also obviously, I get very obsessive about uh, the work and, and making it and creating it. Uh, this is a photograph of uh, myself and two other veterans. Um, Michael Jernigan's in the photo. He's a well-known vet. Uh, he's missing both of his eyes. And I can tell you that he rolled paper better than anybody else. And it was really incredible. Like, that we kind of picked on him a little bit just because it's on his, uh, it's something you can do with him. Like, vets pick on vets. We all do that. And so we've moved things away from him. And it was kind of funny to do that, you know. <laughs> but just because he was better than everybody else at rolling paper, we were like, what? But, um, but one, one thing that was really incredible is I linked up to this nonprofit organization in Dallas called Honor, Courage, Commitment. And they have an initiative called 22 Kill, which raises awareness about the 22 veterans that commit suicide every single day. When I first heard that statistic, it blew my mind. I was thinking, 22 veterans that kill themselves every, every single day. And that's, I did the math, that's 8,030 veterans a year. And the first thing I did was say, okay, no way. You know, there's just no way that this could be true, that 22 veterans commit suicide a day when 105 people in the U.S. on average commit suicide a day. So we take up such a huge part of the statistic. You know, 22 vets a day, that's a little over 20% of the national statistic when we take up less than 7% of the national statistic of the population. So it was this problem, and I was thinking to myself, 
what, you know, what is going on? Why are vets committing suicide? We're supposed to be these strong people, right? You know, and um, the truth is, it's like, we're not all strong all the time, obviously, but um, I started looking into it to really find out whether or not that statistic was true or not. And so I went on to do a ton of research and I found that there's probably not a lot of truth to that exact statistic. It can't be 22 veterans a day. There's no way to know that it's really 8,030. But then I looked further and further and further into it. And the, the other thing too is that um, the VA kind of romanticized that statistic. It kind of made it seem like it's a 22 veterans of today's war that um, are committing suicide. And really it's a veterans issue. This is a veterans issue ranging from World War II vets to today's vets. So it's not 22 young vets like myself that are committing suicide. It's 22 vets all across the board. And so when I first heard it, I thought it was like 22 people my age committing suicide. And I was like, this is just completely unreal. No way it's true. And then I looked into it and I was like, well, that's significant though. You know, why is it that 22 veterans are committing suicide a day? Or why is it that this number of vets are committing suicide? And so I started thinking about one thing we all have in common is that we all were in the military and it's no secret that post-traumatic stress disorder, you know, is, is out there, but also that it's not okay to go get help in the military. You know, and, and if I know people will argue with me that, no, that's not true. They have mental health in the military, and you can go and you can see the psychologist. I'll say bull crap to that. I was in, I know, and I was a dental technician in the Air Force, and it was not okay even for somebody like me to end up in mental health. I had a friend who really wanted to be a military training instructor, and she got denied being a military training instructor because of her history with mental health and being able to like go and talk to a therapist about her problems, when the truth is she went to go talk to a mental therapist because she was stressed out about being stationed in England so far away from home. You know, and, and now she can't be a military training instructor because she had gone to, see, to seek help for that. You know, it's, so it's one of those things where I think that that carries on with you. There's several things that carry on with you after you leave the military, and I think feeling like it's not okay to get help has to be one of those things because there's people who've been out of the military for 30 years and they still have that stigma of like, it's not okay to get help. And I've even been that way before where I feel like my problems, like it's a secret, I don't want anybody to know, it's nobody's business. But really it's funny because like it, higher social classes, sometimes it's something almost to brag about. Like, oh yeah, I went and I saw the psychologist today. And so it's, it's a very different way of thinking. You know, getting a therapist when you know, you're a military veteran, you don't want that because you don't want to appear weak because they see it as a weakness when really it's a, it's a strength to go and get help and fix yourself. So anyway, I just ranted a little bit about <laughs> post-traumatic stress disorder and the 22 veterans that commit suicide a day, but um, that was really the basis behind the project and what I was doing. This is a photograph here of more people helping me. Um, in total, I had 101 people put their hands on my project. Um, and like I said, 55 people showed up to roll paper for me and there were more people that worked on letters of sacrifice as well. But for a battle lost, 101 people and the majority of them were veterans. And, and that was all because of <coughs> hooking up with 22 Kill, the initiative from Honor Courage Commitment to raise awareness about the fact that here was this artist in Austin that was making this art piece and we could all come together and we could help this artist and so it was a way for a bunch of veterans to come together and discuss all the issues there again. Um, it created a conversation. And there were a lot of us that were just telling our stories. You know, every veteran has a funny story to tell. It's not all serious. You don't have to ask them if they've killed somebody. You can ask them about basic training. If you ask a vet, that's my one of big advice about veterans. If you ask a veteran about basic training, they will have a funny story to tell you. I promise, because it's, it's a little humiliating and funny at the same time. But here's a bunch of people helping me in my studio um, with creating um, a battle lost. Here's a picture of it again. Um, so this is the final piece. Right now it's in a museum in San Francisco. And um, so the gold lines, uh, all the movement in the, the piece, like we glued down the pieces to make this big giant abstract map. And so um, Ramadi, Iraq is all the way there to the left um, and it butts up to um, Afghanistan, a ridge in Afghanistan. There's the death triangle there. There's um, Hiroshima and Nagasaki are there. Somalia, Baghdad with a river running through it. I mean, all these different places um, are all over the map and it's all abstract and I did that for a reason and it's because what we remember oftentimes after having like post-traumatic stress or being stressed out about something, anything, and I think most people can relate to this. Once you've gone through something traumatic, 
and you're stressed out about it, what you remember oftentimes isn't exactly what happened. And so that's why I wanted it to be this abstract map where it connected all the wars from World War II all the way to today and the active conflicts that we have right now in the Middle East. And so, you know, if there's any sort of takeaway from this talk at all, and uh, me ranting about the military and my artwork and showing you images of things, if there's anything you take away from this, I really hope that it's that, you know, if you're really passionate about something, and it can be anything, if you're passionate about it and you just have a little fear to go ahead and raise awareness about it, you know, because that, that's what my art does. It raises awareness about issues that are larger than me. Um, if you're passionate about something, like, take that fear away and just go and raise awareness about it and go and do something, talk to people. Um, even that, it could be simple as that, just a Facebook post about something that you care about. And, um, and I think that that, you know, is what makes our world so unique. We can, we can all care about different things and raise awareness about it individually to other people. You know, there's things that I don't care as much about, but if somebody told me about it, I'm all ears and I would love to hear and love to um, listen about, you know, all these different issues that are going on. So I want to thank you all for your time, and uh, this has been a pleasure to, uh, to speak to you all. Thank you.